फाइव सेकेंड्स टू गो स्टार्ट फेस्ड विद दीज एडवर्सिटीज वी हैव नो ऑप्शन बट टू अंडरटेक सम बोल्ड स्टेप्स इन ऑर्डर टू एनहांस इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी एंड स्पर ग्रोथ इन द इकोनॉमी दीज स्टेप्स आर ओनली द बिगिनिंग ऑफ आवर एफर्ट टू रिवाइव द ग्रोथ स्पिरिट ऑफ द इंडियन इकोनॉमी दे आर डायरेक्शनल my government is committed to the principle of minimum government maximum governance to achieve this goal time has come to review the allocative and operational efficiencies of government expenditure to achieve maximum output the government will constitute an expenditure management commission which will look into various aspects of expenditure reforms to be undertaken by the government the commission will give its interim report within this financial year i also propose to overhaul the subsidy regime including food and petroleum subsidies and make it more targeted while providing full protection to the marginalized poor and sc sts a new urea policy would also be formulated the debate whether to introduce a goods and services tax gst must now come to an end we have discussed the issue for the past many years some states have been apprehensive about surrendering their taxation jurisdiction others want to be adequately compensated I have discussed the matter with the states both individually and collectively. I do hope we are able to find a solution in the course of this year and approve the legislative scheme which enables the introduction of GST. This will streamline the tax administration, avoid harassment of the business and result in higher revenue collection. both for the center and the states i assure all states that government will be more than fair in dealing with them the sovereign right of the government to undertake retrospective legislation is unquestionable however this power has to be exercised with extreme caution and judiciousness keeping in mind the impact of each such measure on the economy and the overall investment climate this government will not ordinarily bring about any change retrospectively which creates a fresh liability honorable members are aware that consequent upon certain retrospective amendments to the income tax act 1961 undertaken through the finance act 2012 a few cases have come up in various courts and other legal fora these cases are at different stages of pendency and will naturally reach their logical conclusion at this juncture i would like to convey to this august house and also the investors community at large that we are committed to provide a stable and predictable taxation regime that would be investor friendly and spur growth keeping this in mind we have decided that henceforth all fresh cases arising out of the retrospective amendments of 2012 in respect of indirect transfers and coming to the notice of the assessing officers will be scrutinized by a high level committee to be constituted by the cbdt before any action is initiated in such cases i hope the investor community both within india and abroad would repose confidence on our stated position and participate 
in the Indian growth story with renewed vigor. Tax demand of more than 4 lakh crore is under dispute and litigation before various courts and appellate authorities. This is one of the serious concerns of all taxpayers in this country. In order to reduce litigation in direct taxes, I propose to make certain legislative and administrative changes. Currently, an advance ruling can be obtained about the tax liability of a non-resident from the authority for advance rulings. This facility is not available to resident taxpayers except public sector undertakings. I propose to enable resident taxpayers to obtain an advance ruling in respect of their income tax liability above a defined threshold. I also propose to strengthen the authority for advance rulings by constituting additional benches. I further propose to enlarge the scope of the Income Tax Settlement Commission so that taxpayers may approach the Commission for settlement of disputes. This would continue to be once in a lifetime opportunity for any taxpayer. As an administrative measure, I propose to set up a high-level committee to interact with trade and industry on a regular basis and ascertain areas where clarity in tax laws is required. Based on the recommendations of the committee, the Central Board of Direct Taxes and the Central Board of Excise and Customs shall issue appropriate clarifications wherever considered necessary on the tax issues within a period of two months. Transfer pricing is a major area of litigation for both resident and non-resident taxpayers. I have proposed certain changes in the transfer pricing regulations which I would spell out in part B of my speech. I hope these measures would go a long way in improving the confidence of taxpayers in the tax system and would provide certainty and clarity in tax laws. The policy of the NDA government is to promote foreign direct investment FDI selectively in sectors where it helps the larger interest of the Indian economy. FDI in several sectors is an additionality of resource which helps in promoting domestic manufacture and job creation. India today needs a boost for job creation. Our manufacturing sector in particular needs a push for job creation. India today is the largest buyer of defense equipment in the world. Our domestic manufacturing capacities are still at a nascent stage. We are buying substantial part of our defense requirements directly from foreign players. Companies controlled by foreign governments and foreign private sector are supplying our defense requirements to us at a considerable outflow of foreign exchange. Currently, we permit 26% FDI in defense manufacturing. The composite cap of foreign exchange is being raised to 49% with full Indian management and control through the FIPB route. The insurance sector is investment starved. Several segments of the insurance sector need an expansion. The composite cap in the insurance sector is proposed to be increased up to 49% from the current level of 26% by 
विद फुल इंडियन मैनेजमेंट एंड कंट्रोल थ्रू दी एफ आई पी बी रूट स्टॉप